No matter how hard we try not to, we all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. But when it comes to keeping an aquarium, there's some very common mistakes that are super simple to avoid. So to hopefully help you avoid those mistakes, we put this list together of 10 things that fish keepers should never do. If you like this kind of content, you should definitely subscribe. And if you know something that fish keepers should never do that you didn't see on this list, put it down in the comment section below. This isn't gonna be the last thing on the list that's gonna seem like common sense, believe me. There's some things on this list that are gonna make you say, huh. When we say don't use chemicals to clean, you probably think I mean don't clean the outside of the tank, and you'd be wrong. We'll talk about that later. No, I'm talking about cleaning things like your decorations or filter with harsh cleaning chemicals. People think they're doing the right thing by getting these things nice and clean and disinfected, but the reality is you're doing more harm than good. There's life that grows on your decorations, on the glass and in your filter that helps keep the water in your aquarium healthy for your fish. Cleaning it all off basically takes you one step forward because it's cleaner and it looks better, but you inevitably take two steps back because without that bacteria on those items, the water will foul up and your fish might start dying off. There's also the threat of not getting those items rinsed off enough and introducing those harsh chemicals right into your aquarium. Rather than pulling those items out and cleaning them with chemicals, just wipe them off with a sponge, and if they're really bad, pull them out and scrub them off using a sponge dipped in aquarium water. Trust me, I know you think you're doing the right thing by getting it all spotless and disinfected and all of that, but unfortunately, this is a recipe for disaster. Just stay away from these cleaners. Okay, maybe I'm a paranoid parent, but children playing around in aquarium, it could be bad for a lot of reasons. The first is pretty obvious. Kids can get a little rough sometimes, and whether it's a pillow fight that misses and hits the aquarium, or they're just flailing like a maniac, they might hit the aquarium and send it down to the ground. Yeah, I know it's far-fetched if it's a larger aquarium, but if it's a smaller one, then it can definitely end up on the ground. I guess it's not crazy to think that a big one could get knocked over too, but it could be disastrous for your fish and your house and even kill your child. Okay, enough of the paranoid talk, let's move on. The other issue is kids jumping around next to the aquarium will create movement and sounds that could easily spook your fish and cause them to dart around and run into things. This isn't a joke. Some fish are strong enough to run into something so hard they end up killing themselves. I know it's being extra picky and overly paranoid, but let's play it safe. Let your children play, but just not in front of the aquarium. I wonder how many Wii remotes have broken an aquarium. I bet it's happened. All right, I'm gonna talk about exercising now. I don't want any jokes in the comment section. You know, I just pretty much guaranteed that we're gonna get all kinds of comments about my non-exercising ass. It, it's happening, wait for it. This one kind of goes along with what Lisa was just talking about, about moving around around the aquarium and potentially banging up against it and blowing out the glass or even knocking it over. Before you say, come on, you two are going a bit far with this paranoia, just think about it. I'm 45 and I'm not only 30 pounds overweight. How dare you say, Psh, more like 50. So mean. I'm also very much out of shape. If I was to pull out my favorite Richard Simmons tape and start sweating to the oldies, it's not being paranoid to think I could get a little lightheaded and woozy. Lose your balance and you could end up going face first into that aquarium. It could happen. Also think about this, our 16 year old CJ, you know, the one that was in the water change video. If you haven't met him yet, I'll put a card up here so you can watch that video. Anyway, his bedroom is up on the second floor of this house and we regularly hear huge booms coming out of his bedroom because it's him dropping dumbbells on the floor. Gotta work out those biceps. I don't know how he drops them, but it happens and it would be a disaster if one of those went right into an aquarium. Oh, and by the way, he also broke one of his windows in his bedroom by getting mad and throwing his video game remote. I guess Lisa could have probably talked about that in the last segment. Anyway, I don't know what we're gonna do with that kid.
I know how tempting it is to find worms in your yard and want to bring them in just to feed your Oscars or maybe one of your other bigger fish, but play it safe and just don't do it. The fact is you have no idea where that worm has been and what it's been exposed to. Worms get into all kinds of nasty stuff, not to mention things like pesticides and lawn fertilizers and whatever that worm eats will end up in your fish. The same rule applies for spiders, bugs, crickets, centipedes, whatever you find around your house. Just don't do it, play it safe. You also have to understand that I live with a man that is a total softy. I can hear him now. What did that cricket do to you? Don't kill it. Come on, I don't sound like that. He is a big baby. I don't know why she's always so mean to me. What did that cricket do to you? Anyway, what are you gonna do if you have a great big old fish, like let's say a Paku, and you gotta get rid of it for whatever reason? You put up a post on Facebook and even Craigslist and no one wants it. None of your friends are into Paku and even your local fish store told you they can't take it because it's way too big. What are you gonna do? Well, I can't tell you what you should do, but what I can tell you is what you absolutely shouldn't do, and that's release the fish into the wild. It's a story that's all too common. The fish got too big or I was moving and no one would take the fish. I had to get rid of it, so I just put it in the local lake. You might look at this and say, what's the big deal? I mean, they're in a huge lake. Don't you think that's better than a four foot aquarium? Well, yes, but the problem is there are fish that have literally taken over bodies of water and killed everything else in it. I've linked to this video many times before, but if you haven't seen it yet, you should definitely check out Steve Poland's video that he did about what common placostomus are doing to the rivers down in Florida. It is shocking. I know this is getting all mushy, but also think about the water you're putting the fish in. Is it the same type of water that your fish is used to? Probably not, which doesn't mean they'll be immediately killed when you put them in, but it could start to slowly kill them through time. Here you think you're doing a good thing for the fish and you're actually setting them up for a slow, miserable death. I know, I know. Come on, John, you're being a little bit too sensitive. Well, Lisa just got done telling you about the kind of guy I am and as ashamed as I am to admit it, it's true. I'm a big baby. times have you heard I don't have a big enough tank for that fish now but when it gets bigger I'll get a bigger tank. I don't know about you but I've heard it a lot but I used to own a fish store so people said it there all the time. This is a huge mistake because unfortunately most of the people that say this don't end up ever getting that bigger tank so the fish end up living their whole life crammed into whatever tiny tank you have. Look, we all have stuff pop up in our lives and can't do what we really wanna do. If anyone understands that, it's me, but this is an easy mistake to avoid. If you find that fish that you just have to have, do the right thing and wait to get it till you have the tank they can live their whole life in. If you want that Oscar, but you only have a 29 gallon tank, just wait till you have that 125. Believe me, you and the fish will be so much happier if you do. Plus the Oscar will grow faster in a bigger tank. You'll feel good about doing the right thing and the Oscar will feel good too. Yes, this is more common than you think. Let me tell you a story. When we had our store, a frequent customer came in on a Saturday morning with a really angry look on his face. I said, what's wrong? And he said, you're not gonna believe this. He had a cleaning service come out to his house that previous Wednesday. They cleaned the entire house and by Friday, all of his fish in one of his tanks were dead and he had no idea why. Then the service showed up again the following Wednesday and noticed the fish were gone and asked about them. My customer stated that they all died that Friday. The cleaning lady had a really sad look on her face and said, oh no, I think that was my fault. She said she'd been cleaning around the tank using some type of cleaner and the overspray got all over the tank. And so she wiped it down to get rid of all of those little spots. The customer was a super nice guy and said, ah, I don't even know if that was it, even though it most likely was. Needless to say, he was really sad and so was the cleaning lady. 
The point is, be very careful with cleaning sprays around your aquarium. Even the overspray going down into the tank can be enough to completely poison your fish. And if you're gonna use a cleaner to clean the glass on the outside, use a product like the glass cleaner from Fritz that's safe to use on aquariums. Oh, and if there's such thing as a happy ending to that story, the cleaning service paid for his replacement fish and gave him like three months free service. This is another common issue that almost every fish keeper is gonna to have to deal with. What to do with your fish if you go on vacation? Unless it's us, we never go anywhere. Figuring out what to do to care for your fish while you're gonna be away from home is never an easy thing unless you have another fish keeper that you know you can trust that's willing to come over while you're gone. We've heard way too many stories about how they had people feeding their fish for them just to come home to a major catastrophe. If someone isn't a fish keeper, they most likely have no clue what you mean when you say, just throw a little food in. To you, a little is a pinch, but to them a little might be half of a can. John even had this happen way before he met me. He came home, his arowana was floating in the tank along with a half a bag of food. I think that's when he was on his honeymoon with his ex-wife. Why? Would I even know that? <laughs> if you're gonna leave your fish in the hands of someone else, here's the best advice I can give you. Buy a box of small Ziploc bags and put the exact amount in them that you would feed each tank and tape the bag to each tank. Then write the day the food is to be given on the bag. Your friend comes in and just pours the contents of each bag into the tank it's taped to. Oh, and another thing, you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. If you're only gonna be gone five or six days, just have your friend feed the fish one time. Have them come on like day three. Your fish won't starve, I promise. Okay, this one is gonna involve another story, so sit back and relax. It's time for another one of those silly John stories. Someone that I know that will remain nameless, but her name rhymes with my Schmex Schmeif used to keep betas in large vases. I know, maybe this is why she is my Schmex Schmeif. Well, I got home from work one day and was greeted at the door and told, we have a problem. While I was at work, she decided to do water changes in her beta vases and she did the unthinkable. She held the vases over the sink, poured half the water out, and then would replace it at the sink, and then the job was done. Well, you guessed it, one of those times, the fish went right down the drain. Fortunately, we had a garbage disposal, which could have made things so much worse. But since the disposal was there, the fish didn't go all the way down the drain. She just left the water running so the fish would stay in the water, there in the sink, in the drain. 45 minutes later, I had the entire thing all taken apart, removed the garbage disposal, and was able to pour the fish right back into the tank or vase. Use common sense, folks. <laughs> Don't take your small aquariums over to the sink and dump them into it thinking that is an efficient way of doing a water change, because believe me, it's not. And hey, if you follow this rule, you may not end up being someone's Schmex Schmeif or Schmeck's husband, whatever. Do we even really need to talk about this? Yeah, how else am I gonna work the Deuce Bigelow clip in? <sighs> Fine. Listen, it's the first thing you were told about fish when you were a kid. Don't tap on the glass. You'll totally freak the fish out and spook them. They're not a dog, they're not a cat, they're not gonna come to you when you call for them or when you tap on the tank. Okay, there you go. You're all set up to roll the clip. Go ahead. Just do it.